What's up guys, Starlink here, coming at you with a progress update on the titles that I talked about in my Metroidvania video. And believe it or not, some of these titles are coming closer to release than you may think. Let's take a look. Well, I guess I might as well talk about Chasm first, right? Since that was the first title I mentioned in the last video, I might as well do it here too. Well, the good news is they completed it. The game's complete. They sent it off for certification from Sony for the PlayStation 4 and the Vita. And while that's taking its process, they're setting up the text for localization and testing or fixing bugs, all that kind of stuff, prepping for launch. And they give us a quick recap on all the tasks they completed in the past few months. They added lots of sound effects. Weapons and items have been improved. They added a bunch of new weapons and items, as well as reanimating the majority of the weapons with more detailed and higher frame rate animations, around double the original frame rates, apparently. In addition to the visual side, several improvements to the gameplay have been added, like the often requested attack canceling. That's when you jump in the air and you attack just before you hit the ground, so you pull off two quick attacks. You know, standard staple for Symphony of the Night kind of fare, Metroidvanias. As well as they added a both a rod and a pull weapon class. So, you know, cool stuff there. Remaining environmental art is complete. Tons of detail in the NPC side quests. So, all the NPC side quests are optional, apparently, but if you do them, you know, it, it fleshes out the town of Karthus more and makes it feel more alive instead of looking and feeling like a ghost town, I guess. They added a bestiary, that's all complete, so you can be able to jot down information on all the enemies killed and jot down some stats and see the item drops, all that good stuff. And they got their ESRB rating. They're officially E10 plus with fantasy violence, simulated gambling, and alcohol references. All right. They've also improved the load times and they tested out achievements and trophies to make sure they work. All that stuff to make sure the game is polished and ready for launch. I mean, you don't want to release the game haphazardly after it's been this long and have, it have a bunch of problems after all. They end it by saying they anticipate it'll be a couple more weeks but they're not too far off from the game coming out. So by the time this update happened, it was the 21st. Now it's uh, been a little over a week. So maybe about a week or so from now, but they said that the next update will be a launch date. So probably about a week from this video, we might hear something or maybe even a day, I don't know, but it's awesome. We're finally getting there, guys. It's been, f what, five years since this game was in been in development. So that's awesome. We're finally gonna be able to play this beast. I know I'm looking forward to it. I know you guys are too. All right, let's delve into Forsaken Castle next, guys. Lily, the main character, has actually improved a lot over her original design. She's not only more animated, but she's also bigger too. And along with that new size, they had to restructure some of the environments, objects, and enemies to compensate for that. Just from the design work and the artwork shown, it looks like it's improved immensely over the original design and it looks fantastic. It looks like the progress is coming along smoothly and the cool thing about it is they have this all compiled in a new pre-alpha demo and as far as I know it's available for everybody to the general public because you don't have to be signed in to Kickstarter to access it. You just go to their Kickstarter update page, their latest update and it has links to multiple areas including Steam where you can download it and try it out for yourselves. I'll make sure I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to try out because it looks really cool. You guys should give it a try. We still don't have any type of firm release date for this game yet because the devs, they wanna take their time and they don't wanna announce anything until they are, have a firm date and grasp and they know it's going to happen, which I can understand. But I will make sure that I'll keep you guys updated because they update on a monthly basis. So we might see it this year, we might not. I mean, it all depends, but I'll make sure I keep you guys updated on its progress. So I didn't expect to receive all of these updates on these games within a span of a week, let alone Time Spinner, a game that rarely receives updates. Because if you're not aware, the dev of Time Spinner, he rarely updates on Kickstarter, maybe three or four times a year. He does most of his updates on Twitch. So when we do receive a Kickstarter update, it's a rare treat, and this is a big one. So let's delve into it. So the Mac and the Linux ports are finished, the PS4 and the PS Vita ports are finished, the last alpha build and the new beta build were released. So all he has to go through now is the rating system. He's already got America's rating system locked down at a teen rating. He still has to go through Europe and then Australia. 
And after he's got all the rating systems locked down, he goes on by saying, after I've received all the ratings, I can then submit the game to Sony for certification. The certification process is rumored to take anywhere from three weeks to three months. It's also possible to fail it, which can delay the game's release even longer. Because of these variable delays that are out of my control, I'm still unable to give a solid release date. If all goes well, we may be able to have a late summer or early fall release. We shall see what happens. Now that's amazing, because this is a game that when I did the list on, a list on the video originally, I never thought this game was going to even make it out this year, because this was the most dire, and like I told you before, this one rarely received any updates. So this is, this is good confirmation. We might actually see this game as an early fall or a late summer release, if all goes well. I guess it all depends on how that certification process goes over at Sony. If it goes at a snail's pace, we won't see it for a while. If not, it might see it sooner. Cross your fingers, guys. Well, there you have it, folks. It's actually kind of funny, really, how all the updates on these games happened within a span of a week. But hey, it worked in my favor, right? So I was able to compile a list all together for you guys and update you on their progress. I mean, Chasm is going to be released literally days at this point. And Time Spinner, that took me by surprise the most, honestly, because I never expected to hear an estimated release date at this point. I mean, as I told you before, the dev at Lunar Ray Games of Time Spinner actually does not update very often on Kickstarter, so that took me completely by surprise. And hopefully Forsaken Castle is not too far off from being released, because the demo I played of that title, the atmosphere, the sound effects, the music, the gameplay, it's really, really fun. And I highly recommend that you try out that demo if you haven't already and you have a Steam account. Highly recommend it. But anyways guys, as always, you know the routine. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and drop a like and leave a comment down below on one of these titles is your most anticipated title to play. Is it Chasm? I mean, that's coming out pretty soon. So honestly, I mean, I'm excited to play that too, but, or it could be Time Spinner because that one, you know, seeing the trailer on that, that really gets you pumped and you really want to play it. That probably has most of the uh, Symphony of the Night vibes going for it too. But anyways, I enjoy all of them. But anyways, guys, as always, I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. And remember, reach for the stars.